morning, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Beecham, and you are watching the hottest Apple podcast on the web. That's Nets, true. That's true. The Apple Byte Extra Crunchy podcast with your host, Mr. Brian Tong. What's up, everybody? Wait, Welcome to the show. I went to the Skype channel because I'm so used to that. <laughs> Mr. Brian Tong. <laughs> I'm here. People that are listening have no idea what's going on. Welcome to the show, everybody. Look. Uh, this is less than 24 hours before the Apple keynote drops, but there was so much stuff that happened over the weekend. We decided to give you episode 99 and a half. Nine, nine 99 and a half. And a half. We're going to jump through everything that we have learned over the weekend. Uh, for those of you who weren't, who were like actually enjoying your weekend, I think around like eight or nine o'clock at night on Saturday in the in the U.S., I just happened to look at my phone and... And all of a sudden, 9to5Mac dropped a bomb because they exclusively were able to get their hands on the a released Gold Master. So this is the final, basically, for public consumption version of iOS 11. It was leaked specifically to them from all indications. It's not anywhere else. And they broke down so many things that we're going to talk about. We're giving them all the credit for all these findings. And at the same time, it kind of made me sad because... We know, I'm still excited for the keynote, but now we know more than ever, and some of these things would have been really cool surprises. It's like a big that would have spoiler, taken us off right? Guard, right? Yeah. It's it like learning about Han Solo before you see Star Wars. Dude. In the last Star Wars movie, right? <laughs> Which was like... What about, what about Empire Strikes Back? Like, uh. like I'm so, I don't want to spoil <laughs> anything, but something happens with Luke and Darth Vader. I'm not, I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump into this. Uh, we're not going to take any calls. We're just going to get into it. And this was this is a bomb. Okay, so basically the iOS 11 Gold Master leaked out. For people that are saying, oh, the developers' betas have been out before, we talked about the HomePod firmware leak that happened about maybe two weeks ago. This is the iOS 11 Gold Master. Okay, so first of all, the biggest news that dropped from it is that the iPhone... The OLED iPhone is expected, based on code and direct references, to be called Beecham. What did we call it literally like eight, nine months ago, almost right after the original, the iPhone 7 came out? What did we call it? The iPhone X? The iPhone X. Did we, do we, we was did, that we confirmed? Did we do that? We joked saying it would be either the iPhone, fu the iPhone Future was our affectionate name, yeah. but we actually outright called out they should make it the iPhone X. Dude, we totally did. And we, because not only, and people now will be like, oh, duh, it's the 10th anniversary. But we we called it out because, look, the the letter X is the most identifiable letter when it comes down to branding. The X. There's no other letter that, that stands out more like an X. It's the 10th anniversary. It sounds cool. But at the same time, you wouldn't think, is Apple going to really do that? Because they're always stuck to their iPhones, 3G, 3GS, 4, 4S. They're calling it the at least the OLED phone, the iPhone X. And they're planning to skip the iPhone. They're not going to call the other two iPhone 7 and 7, 7S and 7S Plus. They're going to call it 8 and 8 Plus. Oh, that okay. has been, that was like the, kind of the first big drop confirmed by this leak. Um, the other part about it is, when I heard that, I was like, dude, Apple Bite Extra Crunchy. Do we just, this is how we roll, man. I, I'm shocked. I'm were you, seriously were you surprised? surprised. I didn't know that until oh, right you, now. Oh, yeah. you literally didn't know that? <laughs> I, did not. I, I, was here, I was seeing a lot of people talking about the iPhone X on Twitter and like on the internet over the weekend and stuff, just, you know, just glancing here and there, but I had no idea that like we had that right. So it's that's awesome. been confirmed. All right. So we have that <laughs> news that dropped about the iPhone X. Um, I even wanted to, I did this fun Twitter poll. Because remember, when Apple had OS X, it was an OS X, and they always called it OS X. They didn't pronounce the X like an X. They pronounced it like a 10. So That's I right. I pulled the Twitter sphere on my account at Brian Tong, cheap plug. We asked, real important, how do you think Apple will pronounce iPhone X? 15% of respondents out of... Two, over 2,500 votes. So this is a legitimate sample size. 15% said iPhone 10. 44% said they would respond iPhone X. 41% responded, who cares? <laughs> I had to throw That's that in funny. because sometimes people get mad at my polls. They're like, I don't care. So I'm like, I'm going to throw in a who cares. Yeah. And uh, the answer was, so clearly everyone thinks they're going to pronounce it iPhone X, but... We will have to wait and see how how that all comes together. Uh, here's some other things. Direct specs about 
the actual iPhone X. This is some. This is just crazy that we know these details. Um, digging deep into again the gold master of iOS 11, it suggests that the new iPhone X will have an A11 Fusion chip, but this chip is a six core processor. It'll pack four high-performance processors, or what they're codenaming Mistral cores, and two battery life efficient cores nicknamed Monsoon or Monson. Mm. So it's going to be a six core processor. If you want to wow. compare that to what was in the A10 Fusion processor in the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, that packed two high performance cores and two high efficiency cores. So it was a four core processor. If you want to compare it to the A10X, which was in the iPad Pro, name drop, iPad Pro, <laughs> that had a six-core setup, three high-performance and three high-efficiency. So this, when you compare all this stuff, it means that the new iPhones, the 8, the 8 Plus, and the X will clearly have Apple's most powerful processors to date, which is not a surprise, but I don't think it's going to be by a little Based on that spec setup, it's going to be by a lot. We're talking about a six-core processor in the iPhone. I remember this seeing is going you, to be a beast. I remember seeing you like demo your your iPad Pro, <laughs> and it was like the fastest thing I've ever seen. I never seen an iPad or any iOS software move that fast. So you're saying that we're going to have this in the iPhone in the next I, iPhone X? Yes, it's you going like to be that fast. Doesn't it sound cool to say iPhone X? Yeah, man, they better Tim Cook. X gonna give it to you, <laughs> uh, dog. That would be awesome if they had like uh, dun, one of those wrestlers. Dun, 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 dun. That's DMX. They got up. They if they know what's going on, they have got to give us a flashy, dope, high energy, quickly edited music video that starts. I'm a dog. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, so that's some of the specs inside. Also, the iPhone 8 is expected. Again, all this is pulled from the code, so I'm not going to keep on saying that. Just know this moving forward, but I like to give credit. Again, this is all 9 to 5 Mac. iPhone 8 will feature 2 gigs of RAM. The iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone X are expected to pack 3 gigs of RAM. Oh so you're going to get a little performance boost there as well. Uh, this is just a beast of the phone. I'm going to go back, Beach, so maybe you can follow along from the very first article, because we're kind of jumping around, but yeah, yeah. we want to talk about a lot of the different features this phone is expecting to get. One of the new features is portrait lighting. So essentially there's going to be some special mode or adjustment specifically through the camera when you take photos in portrait mode that will optimize the lighting for those pictures in this phone. Nice. Also... It's expected to be getting a true tone display for the iPhone X. The same true tone display in my iPad Pro. Okay, so that's where it basically, based on the lighting, it has ambient light sensors that change the color temperature of your screen to match your environment. So it's not like you have this super crazy, it just look, white looks like white based on the environment that you're in. So I don't, I don't have to turn off, there's not going to be like a sleep mode or what? what is that called? A uh... You know what I'm talking about when you change the color of the oh the uh, night the night night shift there's still gonna be night shift still gonna there's it's still not gonna, gonna have night shift okay it's just that in regular daylight on the fly it's going to be able to adjust I see it's made it made it sound like it was gonna be an automatic thing or something it, it is automatic oh, okay and cool. then night shift you can schedule that which I do and it's helped me it actually has helped me a lot before I would be reading comics at like 1 a.m. at night yeah. and I couldn't go to sleep <laughs> and now if I'm tired I'm like because it has kind of the warmer tones. With your, you know, your biorhythm, it sets it up. So it's gonna have, it's gonna have that as well. As we scroll down, there's been images and animations inside the Gold Master, uh, just kind of showing off that silhouette of the iPhone X. And then we'll, we're gonna talk about these things called <laughs> animojis in a second, but not, yeah. not just yet. You haven't heard about these animojis. I have, have heard about you them. Have yeah. them. Okay, fine. Not fine. really excited about it. Fine, you, you read, you read, you read, you read too much. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to tell people at the beginning of the show, if you don't want to hear about this and you want to be surprised tomorrow, you pr probably turn, should stop listening turn to the off show. The show. <laughs> stop listening. Don't listen to the show. Yeah. Okay, here's more information about the iPhone 8 and iPhone X stat or sorry, about the iPhone X status bar and how it's going to really accommodate this notch at the top that everyone has been talking about. A little, I don't want to say controversial, but some people like it, some people don't. 
I just like the idea of it just being a smooth line across, but we know the notch will exist. Um, they put out kind of a little quick video animation, and like the rumors have said, the time on the top left corner will be there, but on the right-hand side, you'll have things like your Wi-Fi signal as well as your battery power, and it'll actually do these kind of cool animations that switch between some of the information that it shows, just kind of these cool, smooth, slick animations on those ears. Remember, Apple is internally calling those two little bigger spots around the notches, the ears. So that they've showed off kind of some animations there as well. And then really the biggest feature that I want to see in action presented by Apple is the Face ID. That That is officially what it's going to be called. Mark Gurman called it out as Face ID, I feel like maybe a month and a half ago. He was the first person that said, Apple's going to call it Face ID. And so what happens in this Face ID is the ability, and I think, uh, Beach, it'll be the next, is it? The next next one, the next one, the next article, yeah. So in Face ID, they have revealed literally the entire setup, like what it looks like on the phone where you hold up your face to it and it has, if you remember kind of what that 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 finder face looks like on, on Apple way back in the day, it looks similar to that, but it's just kind of like a, a flat image. And when you set up your phone for the first time with Face ID, it says, oh, move your face around or kind of rotate it around so it can see all the different edges or angles of your face. It'll be able to detect that. And then once it saves that or stores that to memory, it'll kind of create your first Face ID scan And then moving forward, that is how you use it. We don't know every application of how this face ID recognition is going to be used, but we do know at least what the initial setup looks like. Again, the this is the biggest leak in Apple history. Yeah. There is no doubt about it. And they were totally talking, you know, just a few months ago how they're gonna lock everything down, they're gonna be highly secretive. And uh and then this happens. This is this is a huge problem for Apple. Yeah, you know, a lot of people aren't happy. Like, I'm even reading the Periscope comments going by really fast. Like, Face ID is not good for privacy. This is really bad. Again, Apple is going to have to tell us a story of how good it is. Why is it better? Why is it faster? Indications also for people that are curious. We've talked about how the uh, power button or the lock button on this new iPhone is going to be longer in size. One of the reasons was to be able to hold it with one hand and be able to turn on the power on and off easily. In the code, it also indicates that that power button with a quick double tap will allow you to invoke Apple Pay. And then if you hold it down, it'll be able to bring up Siri. So that that physical home button that's longer, that's going to take over some of the functionality that the home button used to have. So I think people that were worried about it, I do, trust me, I like it at the bottom, but people are going to uh, be able to use the power button for that functionality. That has been confirmed again in this firmware drop. And you know what, before we go on, I wanna kind of bounce back to this whole firmware drop and I really feel like this was someone, people have been just started talking about, but when I saw this, I feel this was intentional. This was oh. not, you know, it was given over to nine to five Mac, whether or not they paid for it or it was just handily given over. I don't know this for a fact, so I'm not gonna say. But for someone to put out a leak like this, knowing that this was a real big moment for Apple, it's their 10th anniversary phone, you know Apple is completely pissed off at headquarters. They aren't happy about this. But this comes off to me as someone internally that felt spited or mad and decided to leak it out to the public. Yeah, I just don't think in previous generations of how Apple's culture was that they would that their employees would be okay with doing this. And maybe part of that is a company getting bigger and larger in size. And maybe it's part of how the company has changed where I feel that there was a fear associated with how Steve Jobs <clears throat> made everything, wanted everything to be a secret mm-hmm. and the reward of that. And I don't think that's the case as much anymore. Like we benefit from it, we get to cover it, but at the same time, there's a lot of surprises that have been lost because of this. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we did that Scott, Scott Forrestal thing. And a lot of things Apple did was based on like how they don't like somebody or, you know what I mean? Like there's all this like bad blood between companies and that might even extend into their culture inside their, inside their building or something. So someone clearly was like, I'm going to show that. That's what I'm saying. I feel like it was someone that, that was pissed off and wanted to get back at Apple internally. And it wasn't like an Android mole. It was someone that 
consciously decided to do this. This was not a strategic leak by Apple for all those people that like to be like, oh, they're trying to build the hype machine. The homeware, HomePod firmware was not a, a marketing ploy, and this was not a marketing ploy. No. So I think you guys and gals should just squash that idea in your mind. Now, talking about some of these cool bells and whistles that were revealed from the gold master we talked about a lot of stuff but i thought this one would have been kind of a fun cute quirky one i mm. used the word cute i did should i sh- are you gonna take my man card away because i said no cute? not at no, all no, I, okay. I say cute all the time well you have kids so that's okay <laughs> that's acceptable so another feature that will be part a software feature that will be part of this face recognition face id platform is the iphone will feature an emojis a n i m o j i Basically, you will be able to send 3D animated emojis based off your facial expression. Uh, They have some examples here in the article. There's like a monkey. There's a robot. So if you scrunch your face one way, it'll actually reflect that in the an emojis. Like, I'm not saying this is a game changer, but I'm going to be sending an emojis. Like, holla. I don't know about you. Are you going to be sending an emoji? Is it going to take work to do? So I have to like put the phone up to my face. Well, you'll probably have to hold your face and then do some like expression, yeah. and it'll take and it'll it'll copy I don't know. it. I might try it like once or twice, and I don't know. I don't. It really depends on how easy it is to do. So check this out, just in case inquiring minds want to know. The poo poo emoji is one of those. Oh, okay. The well, poo poo emoji will be able to be used as an an emoji. I can see my kids using that. Oh, a I'm lot. gonna use I'm gonna use poo poo emoji all the time. <laughs> I wish they did have an eggplant emoji, emoji oh, yeah. if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that can get oh. X-rated real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> the squirt, squirt emoji <laughs> and the uh, yeah. little combo there. So uh, there's also separate assets, and you can scroll down lower in that article, Beach, for people that want to see this. There's separate assets that highlight the variety of expressions that this will be able to support in the an emoji functionality. Uh, things like left and right eyebrow movements, cheeks, Raising the chin, opening or squinting eyes, moving the jaw, lips as well as mouth movements like frowning and smiling. These are all things that will be able to be incorporated into this an emoji. Cool. I mean, but see, that's the thing that you would have been like, if you first heard it, I probably would have made fun of it at first, but then I'd be like, oh my gosh, I would totally do that. Yeah, I mean, there's like these weird uh, animation apps that you can use, or you know, it's like the face filters, really. But then you have like a whole cartoon character that you can move with your face and like talk and like talk through it or whatever. My kids love to play with that stuff, so they're yeah. going to play with this all this, the time. They're going to be animojis, animo- animojis. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, we're going to talk about also. It wasn't just the iPhone that was leaked out of this. What about the Apple Watch? The new iOS 11 Gold Master that was leaked, and again, for people that are just listening in, it is the final version of the operating system that is sent out that you and I will publicly be able to get our hands on. In the Apple Watch setup, they decided to run the Apple Watch app, um, and this is video, and this is video that 9 to 5 Mac posted, but they're able to post, like, let's go in the Apple Watch app and just see, like, hey, what, what does it look like? Did they show anything? And revealed what the new... LTE Series 3 Apple Watch will look like. Now, it looks very similar, but what they also showed is there's an indication where there's like a red dot on the uh, digital crown. Hmm. And that may or may not, that may or may not exist in the final iPhone. They might just be trying to point that out. But also in in the images, you can see there's a, there's a cellular, there's a, a, like a, you know, the cell signal, not a cell signal, sorry. Oh, like a a call signal. Like oh, the actual yeah, telephone signal on the top top left is one of the complications on the watch, which most likely will jump you into the cellular functionality of the actual Apple Watch. A long time ago, Tim Cook was actually even w- was spotted wearing <clears throat> an Apple Watch with a red dot on the crown, and everyone thought, oh, it might be just a limited version for him. We don't know if the final, final physical hardware will have a red dot. I honestly hope it does not. Like, I don't care about... I don't want a red dot on my on it, an Apple does Watch. Does it light up, though? No, no. It just looks like it's... Well, we don't know, actually. I shouldn't say that. I doubt it lights up. I highly doubt it lights up. But it's there. So, you know, we've talked about the LTE Watch. The expectation, again, revealed is that the LTE Apple Watch will use the same phone number as your iPhone, and some carriers are working on offering a free or cheaper trial plans to pair your Apple Watch Series 3 with your phone. And 
Again, we'll see how much of this data it'll actually be able to use, how independent it will really be, because earlier rumors had said we won't be able to use the Apple Watch as like a direct-to-call, at least not initially at that time, and it would be, oh, you could maybe use FaceTime audio or VoIP apps like Skype, but maybe they've got it resolved by the time this keynote happens. We'll wait and see, but it's another kind of really... That's one of the things it, I want to see. It would it would be super cool if it just was a part of your plan that you already have, you know, and you just Oh, like, they're gonna make you pay more for it, bro. I hope not. If they just add the Apple Watch to your current plan where it's pulling from your data, it's pulling from your minutes the same, that would be the bomb. I would go buy one, seriously. <laughs> you know. Keep dreaming. But if they're gonna make Keep it dreaming. like another LTE twenty dollars a month or whatever, ten dollars a month, come on. I'm gonna. I. Th- you know what? It won't be either of those. It's gonna be fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> it won't be either yeah, of those. Yeah. So we have that. Also, the firmware points to new Apple Watch finishes. Blush gold is one of them. That was also a rumored color. One of the color options for the uh, new iPhone, as well as a, a gray ceramic. Right. Remember, the first gen one was a cer- was a gray was a ceramic and uh, white. So it looks like they'll be bringing a gray ceramic to the Apple Watch this time around. Again, all types of crazy stuff just thrown out. Uh, Beecham, I'm sorry. I totally was jumping around, but I did forget that new OLED-specific, OLED and I think you were on that page, OLED-specific wallpapers were also found in the firmware for the iPhones as well. Okay, I'm so trying we'll, to find that one. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about it. Um, we're going to go on and talk about the Apple TV. The official name... Looks like it will be the Apple TV 4K, according again to the revelations from this massive leak. The other kind of cool nuggets about this is, yes, it'll support HDR. Dolby Vision will be part of the support. These have been confirmed in the firmware. The other thing that may be a part of this is a new Siri remote. It's been noted with a separate new part number, but the Siri remote could feature some sort of a haptic feedback or even 3D touch functionality. And there's an indication that there will be an additional button on this Siri remote. That's part of this new Apple TV 4K. Haptic feedback. Yeah, haptic feedback. Hmm. We we will see. The other thing that I find interesting about this Apple TV 4K is that for the very first time, our own David Katzmeyer, who is our TV reviewer and like set-top box reviewer, he was invited to the Apple keynote, which means they plan on doing something big. Like, just to think about it. They've how many Apple TVs have they released announced? They haven't invited him ever before. This year they're inviting him. I saw him. I saw him lingering around. He had like a group of people following him around. It was it was so, cute. I think that's a big deal. And also, I've got to imagine they need to tie this in, whether it's with the remote. They've got to tie this to the home pod somehow. Yeah, yeah. They've it got has, to. it has to have some sort of interaction. You know, they have they talked about the surround sound and all that stuff. It has to, yeah. So that, that'll be part of it. The other thing is in the details of the firmware, the 4K Apple TV appears to feature an A10X Fusion chip with systems on the chip with three gigs of RAM. So remember the previous Apple TV was an A9 chip. This one appears to have an A10. The A9 was not able to stream or power 4K video. At least that's what Apple had kind of pushed and claimed and we all knew that the A10 could because that was in the iPhone uh, 7. So an A10 chip and 3 gigs of RAM are expected to be in here. Um, and also there were reports of kind of the different codecs of video or sorry, different video formats that it would be supporting uh, that will also include 4K. So the Apple TV will get a boost as well. And then this one was kind of, I wanted you guys to show that sh- if you can show people that are watching this beach, there's actually a video clip revealed of a default Apple TV 4K screensaver. We know how Apple kind of has these cool, nice picturesque screensavers. Nine to five Mac pulled this one out from the firmware again. This is a one of their 4K. It's a for those listening, it's a snowy landscape with a great like kind of sky you can see the sky all the way down with the blues and oranges and and these nice clouds, it's it's really pretty, and it's just kind of panning across it nice and slowly. Yeah. It's cool. And you're watching it right now in 720p, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> yes. Um, The last bomb from this whole drop, again, we just wanted to kind of jump in. There's just so much stuff going on. Is This is the last piece of the puzzle. This is loose. 
But according to Benjamin Geskin, who has also been digging into the Gold Master, there were references in the firmware of a potential 7th gen iPod Touch with Face ID. Nice. So he says it most likely it's referencing them kind of future proofing the iPod Touch line and that and he doesn't expect an actual iPod Touch to come out with Face ID, but it exists in the code. So that that references the fact that we may or may not see something like this. We'll see. Cool. That'll probably be my kid's first phone. It might be. iPod Touch. Um, I'm sorry because there's so much stuff and I've been jumping around. I also forgot to mention, and if you can pull up um, the revised AirPods uh, yes, yes. GIF that I have, GIF, GIF, whatever you want to call it. Again, in the firmware, we don't, we don't know if this is actually an entirely brand new AirPods, but in the code... There's a animation of new AirPods. The reason why we call them new, if you look really carefully, where the power... Right now, the current AirPods in the carrying case, the power dot, the status of it is inside the cover. There's actually a dot on the outside of the cover now, it's which would see. indicate at least this is some type of revised AirPods. We can't tell if the stems are shorter or not. They look the same to me, but ultimately, we might actually see at the very least a revised version of airpods at this keynote or a revised airpod case that comes with the current airpods nice this is crazy this is i've never seen so much official this is official stuff leaked ever before at an apple keynote it's bonkers yeah so uh beach are that's you that's why we had to come out here i'm i'm a little overwhelmed that like i feel like the party's been spoiled for tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. but we had to come out here you know brian he, he texted me really early this morning he's like so much stuff dropped over the weekend like we have to get in front of it you know what i mean because we can't like look like we don't know what's going on tomorrow so yeah, it's stupid it's stupid you know what i mean way. yeah so that's that's why we're here and we're we're trying to get out in front of the story and tomorrow we'll see if it all is true but it's it's looking like it's this is what we're going to see People in the chat that say that are saying Apple leaked them. Apple did not leak this stuff. No. There is no reason. There is no good reason for Apple to leak this stuff. It makes no sense whatsoever. So, I'm I'm curious. Like, are you guys and gals less excited or still hyped about the event? I I got to tell you because so much is dropping and there's still a lot to see. I'm excited about it. Um, we want you to call our show. Because we're waiting to hear your impressions about. We're gonna do a, a podcast right after the keynote, like later in the day, to get our hot take raw reactions. But the number you guys and gals can call us at is one eight hundred six one six two six three eight. We kind of want to hear what you think of the keynote after it happens. So I know you'll hear this, you'll listen to us. The loyal listeners that are out there, we know that you're gonna call us. So we love that. But just be a part of the show. Just a reminder: our coverage for the keynote, at least here at CNET, will start at nine a.m. Pacific time. 12 p.m. Eastern time. The actual keynote takes place at 10 a.m., but like we always do, we talk about everything, everything you heard here. We're going to have Lexi Savides here, uh, Patrick Holland, and Stephen Beecham, kind of the A-team that's going to talk about all this stuff. We'll do the keynote. We'll do a post-show. That'll all happen like it normally does tomorrow, less than 24 hours from now. And Beecham, I'm sorry to let you... So I'm sorry you know more than you ever did. It's all good, man. It's I'm, I'm happy head. to I'm happy to help out, but um yeah tomorrow 9 a.m. and uh, leave some call us we're gonna have a phone line up and let us know what you guys think yeah sounds good okay so uh, I think we're gonna just wrap this up no calls this week or for nine there are no calls whenever you do a show that's a half show yes a 99 and a half doesn't get calls <laughs> so that's right we will keep it rolling here we'll talk to you later this week this was our special bonus episode take care as usual. Just make it through the day before tomorrow. You know you want to watch this stuff. And we'll talk to you soon. Be safe. Peace.